guys, David here, one, two, two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day, and it's the, the only day we have. And today we're gonna be continuing our look at every main set of the game with our top 10 best cards in the Storm of Ragnarok. It seems that the Synchro era is starting to wind down and we're finally actually getting some cards that you'd wanna put in a deck. And because he's been complaining about not being in a video for a while, I got my buddy Jason here to do all the even cards. Get over here and talk about the stupid compass. Number 10 on our list is Cosmic Compass. Cosmic Compass is a level one machine type monster. When you normal summon it, it will special summon compass tokens up to the amount of monsters your opponent currently controls. When the card was originally made, it was obviously for synchro spam. But now with summoning mechanics like link summoning, this card is absolutely abusable. I love that compass, it's always important enough like this. This is why we can never get through video fast. <laughs> Number nine is the normal trap card, Hope for Escape. Hope for Exodia is a normal trap card with the following effect. If your opponent's life points are at least 1,000 higher than yours, pay 1,000 life points and then draw one card for each increment of 2,000 life points, your life points are different. Basically, the idea is that if you're coming from behind, you can just, what, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Basically, the idea of this card is if you're in a disadvantageous position and you're low on life points, you can just hope for escape and draw a bunch of cards. The big hope for Exodia play was basically you spend a bunch of your life points to get your life points down to a disadvantageous position and then draw half your deck in an attempt to get those precious limbs. It's a pretty solid draw card, despite the fact that it's a little slow being a trap. And it's a little clumsy nowadays, but has certainly seen plenty of competitive play in mostly cheese decks, but still nonetheless, a pretty solid little draw card. Number eight on our list is Scrap Shark. Scrappy Shark, do 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 do, Scrappy Shark, do 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 do, Scrappy Shark. The Scrappy Shark. Okay, I know what I said, I got kids. Scrap Shark is a level four fish type monster that reads, if the effect of a monster or a spell and trap card is activated, destroy this card. If this card is actually destroyed by a scrap effect, you can then send another scrap monster from your deck to the graveyard. This card starts off your BS ass combo <laughs> along, <laughs> along with Scrap Golem and Scrap Factory. My final thought on the scrap deck is that I fucking hate it. <laughs> Number seven is Doppel Warrior. This dark level two warrior monster has the following effect. When a monster is special summoned from your graveyard, you can special summon Doppel Warrior from your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard for a synchro play, you can special summon two tokens to the field in attack position. Obviously, the use of this card is to make one synchro play and then summon those tokens to make more synchro plays. We are in the late synchro era. Go figure. However, this card has also seen a resurgence in play during Master Rules 4 and 4 plus. New game extra. Master Rule 5. Because just like synchros, links just want more bodies on board, so cards like this let you extend your plays. And it's a very useful little extender for your monster mash. It is the monster mash. The monster mash. It's a graveyard smash. Number six on our list is Chaos Hunter. Chaos Hunter is a level seven fiend monster with the following effect. When your opponent special summons a monster, you can discard one card and special summon this card from your hand. While Chaos Hunter is on the field, your opponent cannot banish any cards. Chaos Hunter is definitely a solid side deck card. When it comes to decks like Lackluster Soldier, Thunder Dragons, and even the new Chaos deck, this will actually absolutely stop them in their tracks. Not only is this card a solid side deck option against those strategies, but it gives you a 2,500 body, which is actually very decent. Number five is Forbidden Lance. This set's actually got quite a few solid tech cards in it, and a lot of these are still pretty decent side deck options. Lance is certainly no exception. This quick play spell card has the following effect. Target one face up monster on the field. Until the end of the turn, that target loses 800 attack, but is unaffected by other spells or traps. The cool thing about this being a quick play spell with an attack reduction and that weird nullification of other spells and traps 
means that it can be used both offensively and defensively. This kind of versatility is extremely useful because you can use it like during the damage step in order to help your monster win a battle. You can use it to defend your monster from some sort of spell or trap effect on board, or you can stop your opponent from using one of their own spell or traps on their own monsters in order to extend their play or whatever they're trying to do. Overall, the card is just extremely versatile, and it's really nice to see that cards like this in the whole Forbidden Package still see some play in some fashion. Number four on our list is Legendary Sith Samurai Shien. The reason why this bad boy is at number four, because I didn't want to do the next card on the list because I refused to read it. It's incredibly disrespectful. <laughs> That's all I need. I don't need to explain Shien at all. <laughs> all right. This level five warrior synchro monster has the following effect. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card, you can negate the activation of that spell or trap card. In addition, when this card will be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can destroy another six samurai instead. With the free negate, as well as self-protection, this card was definitely ahead in its time. There's no wonder why many consider this the boss monster of the deck. Fuck the next card. Number three is, oh boy, uh, Karakuri Steel Shogun model 00X Burrito. Aha, I just read it off the computer. <laughs> burrito, like from Chipotle. This big synchro monster from a deck that is basically Wish.com Super Heavy Samurai is actually a key to their strange change their battle position weird flippy strategy. A level 8 earth machine with 2800 attack. When this card is synchro summoned, you can special summon one Karakuri monster from your deck. Obviously, a synchro monster that summons another monster from your deck is a great way to extend your plays and gives you some sort of insight into what the deck is trying to do. Its second effect is when the battle position of a Karakuri monster is changed, you can draw one card. This obviously combos with the other Synchro Monster in their strategy. Kara Curry Shogun Model Double O Blu-ray Double Double Blu-ray <laughs> Special Features, which says when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can also special summon one Kara Curry Monster from your deck, and it also has an ignition effect which allows you to change the battle position of one monster on the field. Hence, proc in the effect of the other Synchro Monster. Using these, and then there's the one guy in their main deck, I forget which one it is, because all their names are just gibberish, lets you just flip guys in defense mode and draw cards and expand the field. It's, it's actually a, a, a surprisingly modern type style spam strategy, despite the fact that this is from kind of an archaic deck, which is neat because it's kind of a theme, the theme of the deck itself. They're like ancient machines. How are you looking at these? Because, I don't know, it's nice talking to a real person for once. <laughs> As opposed to this thing on a stick. Hello, thing on a stick out there. But yeah, it definitely should have been number four. Because she ends a better card, Jason. Screw that. It <laughs> number two on our list is Divine Wind of Mist Valley. This field card has the following effect. Once per turn, when a wind monster you control is sent right back to your hand, you can special summon another wind monster from your deck. Despite belonging to the Miss Valley archetype, this field card has been better utilized. <laughs> you making that Despite belonging to the Miss Valley archetype, decks like Harpies and Yusenjus manage to actually use this card better than the archetype that it belongs to. And the fact that it can bring out various statue of the storm wind is just icing on the cake. You just, wah, you gotta love it. All right, we have some honorable mentions for this set, because like I said, the set actually has quite a few solid cards in it. And for our honorable mention today, we got Worm King. Now here's a deck that I never thought I'd ever talk about because on the grand scheme of Yugi history, worms are a bit obscure. And due to the fact that they kind of accidentally misused Future Fusion, it's probably the only reason why they were ever competitively viable for being a flip deck. However, they do have some solid strategies and Worm King is certainly one of their decent boss monsters. This level 8 light reptile monster allows you to tribute summon it for one tribute if you use a worm reptile monster as the tribute fodder. It also allows you, while it's on field, to use its ignition ability in order to tribute another worm reptile monster to pop one card in the field. Late synchro era Yu-Gi-Oh is still relatively early in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, so boss monsters that allow you to remove cards on the field are still pretty novel at this point. And it's also kind of interesting to see a boss monster from this era that is not a synchro monster that is at least kind of interesting. And our dishonorable mention for the set is the Nordic Lights. <laughs> this field spell card protects your Nordic monsters from battle. However, that's so stupid. It's incredibly disrespectful. Because the only ways that Nordics search anything is with two battle tutors. So why would your field spell stop your two searchers from working? But to add insult to injury, 
This came in an ultimate rare in this set, and number one didn't. Somehow, this got an ulti printing in this set, and number one didn't. Why? Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. And number one, the banned card in the set needs no introduction, Maxi. Maxi is probably one of the best hand traps we've ever had in this game, and honestly, I miss this damn thing. When you're sitting there staring at your opponent doing their wombo combo for the last 20 minutes, you think to yourself, damn, where's my Maxi boy? As a quick effect, you can discard this card to the graveyard so that every time your opponent special summons one monster, you can draw one card forcing your opponent into what is called the Maxi Challenge. Where now, if they want to combo off and keep summoning monsters to the board, they need to weigh their options and decide, is it really worth it allowing you to draw half your deck? Because the more cards you have, the more likely you have an out to their stupid board they're trying to construct. Maxi creates a really interesting game state and allows you to mitigate your opponent's wombo combo, but you do run the risk that if the card is not at like three in the format, it become super, super sacky. If we only have Maxi at one, that means pretty much the player that opens the card wins the game, and that's a pretty, sh that's frankly a shitty game state. Kind of seems that most players have come to the consensus that if you have this card, it's at three, and if you don't have this card, it's at zero. There is no in-between. It's either Maxi all the time or Maxi none of the time. Amanda in the back. Currently, you can only have zero Maxi. So they are not allowing you to Maxi pad your deck? This is why I normally record by myself! Hey guys, that was the list. Let me down in the comments below just how awful that experience was for you guys, because I'm I'm sure it was just the worst thing to edit. I I cannot wait, Jason. It's not wrong. It's 100% your fault. But anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and remember guys, if you don't troll a meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my totally rad dueling. Watching more of these videos is almost as fine as Taya's ass? What? I'm not saying that. Fine. Then it's time to duel.